all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, neither height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, not to me only, but to all who have loved his appearing. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to the glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. I leave with you my peace I give to you not as the world gives for in the world you will have tribulations but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world you may be seated in the presence of our Lord and this family. To Sister Boatwright, Brothers Boatwright, the children, the eternal partner, I say to you, grace and mercy beyond to you. On behalf of Rehoboth, the Rehoboth family, we bring to you love, comfort, and hope. And at this time, I will turn it over to our presider for this ceremony, the Reverend Dr. Yvonne Frederick.
life and the legacy of Mr. Tyrone Esau Boatwright. We'll be following the order of service as printed. We'll have a selection by Brother Curtis Jackson, the Old and New Testament from Reverend Matty Branch, and the Prayer of Comfort from Deacon Michael Buford. Yea, though I walk 
through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thy are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thy anointeth my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <clears throat> and I will be reading John, the 14th chapter. And I will ask that you hold up for a minute. Okay. John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Yea, believe in God, believe also in me. Yeah. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And wherever I go, ye know. And the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we not know whether thy goest, and how can we know the way? <clears throat> Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers of his word and the doers of his word. Amen. Good morning. Uh, Sister Esther and Brother Abraham, Brother Clarence, and to uh, members of the Boat Ride family that I've had the pleasure to meet this week. Uh, please know that the Baptist family, uh, Dr. Ivory, uh, Faith Pan, and the Deacon Ministry. Uh, we send our condolences and sympathies uh, during this time of challenge. <coughs> Let us look to the Lord in prayer. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us this far along the way. O oh, merciful God, we come seeking your face this morning, dear Lord. Uh, Father, we have come to know you as a omnipresent God, Father, 24-7, Father. You're always at work. Uh, but, Father, we are going to be obedient, Father, even though your word tells us that where two or three are gathered, you will be in our midst. So, Father, we know you're here, but, Father, we're going to be obedient, and, Father, we're going to invite your spirit in. To this place because Lord we need you yes. we need you in each and everything that we do yes. Father we can't pray without you the songs that we sing are just songs but with the spirit Father these are pleasing melodies in your sight Father Father preaching is more powerful when you are in this place yes. so Father we invite your spirit in Father as we celebrate the life of Dear Lord, on April 10th, 1989, you blessed Sister Esther with a beautiful gift. Yes. Uh, Father, she loved that gift and cherished that gift. And that gift of Tyrone loved her and cherished her. Yes. Uh, Father, the Boatwright family loved that gift. And we thank you for it, dear Lord. Father, a short week ago, dear Lord, you whispered his name and Brother Tyrone answered that call. Father, you know back in 1989, April 10th, that this day would be coming, dear Lord. But Father, we thank you. Thank you for the time that Brother Tyrone was here in this season. Father, he has run his race. Father, he has moved on from labor 
to reward you. And we thank you. And dear Lord, while we are still on this side of the Jordan, Father, we pray that you would strengthen us, Father. Because, Father, we are in the midst of our race. And, Father, we need you. Father, this family needs you. Because, Lord, they are moving on without a peace that they have come to love for the past 35 years. So lift them up in all that they do. Continue, Father, to smile on them and be with them. Lord, it's sometimes hard to understand how these things work, Father. Your ways are not always easily understood. But we thank you for your word. Your word helps us along the way. It was that word that reminds us, Father, that we're simply just here for a season. Father, your word tells us that there's a plant, time to plant and a time to pluck up. Time to be born and a time to die. So we thank you for your word. And Father, we will certainly need that word as we move forward. Lift us up, Father. Be with us, Father. Strengthen and comfort this family as they navigate a new path in life. So they need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Call upon your holy and righteous name. These blessings, Father, we ask it in the name of the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, I pray. Reflections by Evangelist Cassandra Spell from Sheepgate Deliverance Ministry Church and Mr. Antoine Boatwright. I think we can all agree, like, there's no way to prepare for death. So um, I didn't really have, like, a speech. I'm going to just share with you guys, like, memories of Tyrone um, with me. So uh, Tyrone was really my first brother, my first best friend um, in this world. And uh, one, oh, I'm sorry, I wanted to, uh, one, thank the Levy Home Funeral Home for hosting the celebration of life. And also to uh, my classmates out in Ridgeview High School, if you guys um, look at some of their pages, a lot of them actually post um, a memory to Tyrone. And the one thing that I saw that they captured is that you always saw Tyrone smiling. You never really had like a... a it's all right. It's all right. You never really had a down day, Tom. He never really had a down day from Tyrone, right? And, uh, you know, just to share some of my memories with guys, like, if you've ever watched something like Pokemon or uh, Rocky, he was my rival. So if you look at, <laughs> uh, if you look at Ask Ketchum, um, I was Ask Ketchum to Gary which, you know, Gary was the superstar. If you look at Adonis Creed, I was Rocky to Adonis. Um, Tyrone was always an innovator. He was always uh, moving forward, and he was open to anything, um, and he definitely would not shy away from a challenge. There's many times me and him got into arguments where he would have me hot because he wouldn't relinquish on his side on the argument. Like, dude, like, understand my point of thought. And he's like, no, man. And he will make you, he will convince you that what he is telling you is true, and you'll start to think like, man, dude, he got a point there, yo. He has a point, yo. Um, and just to keep going, uh, the, the, the biggest thing that I uh, remember from Tyrone is that I could always call him, and things wouldn't change whether we talked for years or didn't talk for months, which, I mean, we've obviously always kept in touch, but um, I'm sorry, guys, I'm, I'm all over the place. 
uh, really had it together. But you know, when you get up here, when you get up here, it's a little bit different. Um, and I'm gonna miss my best friend, yo. Like, I was always when we moved to South Carolina, I was always chasing to get back to New York, not from um, just being back in New York, but to get back to my friend. You know, like like I said, he was the one I pretty much came into this world with, as far as me existing and knowing um, as a child. So. Uh, man, I feel like I'm doing him a disservice right now, guys. I'm telling you, I'm sure he would be laughing at me right now. Like, that's <laughs> it. That's it. Um, Amen. But um, at the end of the day, I'm going to really miss Sauron. Uh, like I said, um, a lot of us were, wasn't expecting this. But uh, he, he was my friend, yo. He was really my friend. Um, he was really my brother. And it's going to feel awkward knowing that you know, his girlfriend has access to his Xbox and seeing his name sometimes, that actually happened recently. I saw his name was like Tyrone, but you know, obviously it wasn't. So, um, man, this is, I, I really felt like I had it together until I came up here. Um, I'm gonna really miss my friend, like I, I am. I'm gonna really miss my brother. Um, I know he's moving on to bigger and better things, uh, but I definitely wish I could have been there at those times. And um, that's all I got, guys. I mean, I'm sorry, but. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. He's, he's coming home, and I'll see you soon, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. The Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Esther Boatwright is my aunt. And just to reflect on Tyrone, I was the babysitter, okay? So I had them too. And then I had a little one as well, which is one year younger than him. She was a girl. But Tyrone had that contagious smile that no matter what, if he did something and he was in trouble, all he had to do was smile and you would just forget about what happened because he just yeah. drew you in. Um, Tyrone would definitely be missed by many. And I know we all, we all share memories, some good memories. And that is what is gonna keep us going day by day. He doesn't want you to have your head down. He doesn't want you to, to be sorrowful. He wants you to move on and remember those good thoughts and good memories that you had with him. And that is what's going to take me, and I know that's what's going to take all of y'all through. Tyrone never missed a beat. Esther loved him very, very much. I know. From how well he was dressed, the schools he went to, she did everything for all her children. And I know she's going to miss Tyrone. I'm going to miss him as well. Tyrone, he is sleeping he's Lord. sleeping Bless and that was Lord. confirmed yesterday visiting him he's sleeping no more pain no more hurting no more worrying about this world and how to get through no more but we all will meet our maker we amen. all will amen. we will have that time where we will all meet our maker but until then just know that to trust God in everything trust him and lean on him and know that one day you will see him again we will all and at this time um, we have some cards that were sent to my aunt and she would like me to read some of them our love and prayers are with you bless are those who mourn for they shall be comforted Matthew 5 4 thinking of you in this time of loss and asking God to tenderly care for your deepest need with heartfelt sympathy. Tonya Stocking and family. Uh, this one, uh, praying for you and your family in your loss. I am your God, I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you, Isaiah 41, 10. And grant his love and comfort 
to your family and to you with deepest sympathy, Rhonda. Sympathy to the family. As you turn to each other and recall the ways your dear one brought joy to so many days, may it comfort you now and help ease your sorrow to know that together you'll face each tomorrow. May God bless you, your loved one. Sorry for your, your loss, Elise and family. with sympathy to you and your family. May it bring you gentle comfort to know that others care. May it help you to remember that friends are always there. May the love and strength of your family help you face each new tomorrow. And may memories that you cherish help to ease your sorrow. Deepest sympathy and prayers for you, Deacon John Diane Glimp. of my, my sister speaking, um, I actually do remember a story. Uh, <laughs> so this is when we were still kids in New York. Um, at this time, this was, uh, we were in Long Island and in the garage was, what is it? The, not the A-track, where you could play the disc. Tape. No, the disc. The old school ones. That's a. Reel the wheel. Reel the wheel, that's so what it's called? Okay, so. I. Um, as Sandra said, she was our babysitter. I was normally the one creating the havoc, right? So I had a great idea to say, hey man, let's toss those as Frisbees, right? So we did. We taught. Now Tyrone was always the voice of reason. He was always the voice of reason with me and I'm always like, I think we can get away with it, right? So we start throwing the Frisbees. My mom comes out. She's obviously extremely mad because there's uh, records all over uh, the backyard, right? So we end up putting those away and we end up getting a football. So at this time, um, we're learning how to play football. We throw the football over the fence. I'm like, let's go ask the lady across, well, let's go ask the neighbor, can we go get the football? I mean, can, did they see the football? Tyrone was like, no, I don't think we should do that, man. <laughs> like, I don't think we should do that. But this was my brother and my ace. He was ride or die. So I asked my mom, hey, can you ask the lady across, did they see a football? She says, no, I don't know what the complications were behind that. That's none of my business. <laughs> but I decide, hey, and I think we were like three or four. I go to the door, me and Tyrone, Tyrone's with me. Hey, I go to the door. My mom comes behind us, I guess from seeing us go over there, confirms that we go over there. Long story short, Tyrone takes the butt whooping with me. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, God bless y'all. Praise the Lord. The good thing about life is that we have these memories that will always be with us regardless of how much time we spent with an individual or, or regardless of how well we knew him. But when we get to hear about them, we get to remember all the good times and all the bad times that we had with them. You know, and so to the Boatwright family, I want to say that our prayers from Rehoboth Baptist Church are with you. To Allison as well, because your loss is great as well. You know, so we want all the family to know that we're always with you, that we'll walk with you through the, the evenings and the nights. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, we'll have a selection by our Hope Baptist uh, Choir and uh, led by Deacon as Linda Cunningham. And then the words of comfort from uh, Deacon, from Reverend Bobby Cunningham. Amen. Yeah. 
Allison, Gwen, Darnell, and family and friends, sisters and brothers in Christ. Grace be unto you. And peace be unto you in the matchless name of God the Father in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Special uh, greeting to Sister Boatwright. Sister Boatwright, this most unnatural thing has occurred. The most unnatural thing of all things that a child precedes a parent in death. But let me tell you, Sister Boatwright, for you have blessed us to know the Lord the way you do. Because we ain't mourning because I know you're mourning. It's going to hurt. I ain't going to tell you a lie up here that it ain't going to hurt because it's going to hurt. But God is with you every step of the way. He promised that he'll never leave you, nor forsake you. You can, if he said it, you can stand on it because he's a rock. He's a rock. Yeah, I won't take nothing away from the grief that you feel today. You lost a love, but it hurts. Pain demands to be felt. Death forces us to ask some hard questions. And, and today I'm sure you're asking some hard questions. But again, we come to celebrate the life of Tyrone. We came today, I hope you came today to hear the word of God, because I can't preach, by the way. But I can tell you what the word of God says. So if you came to hear the word of God, you're going to be met as you came. You're going to have comfort today. So I will not tarry. I do want you to turn in your text or in your Bible, in your scriptures. We're going to consider an Old Testament text coming from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. If you have your Bibles, turn there. If you don't, I'll read it for you. But they, I'll be reading from the King James Version, but they, that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of God for the people of God. And the New Testament scripture will come from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Again, from the King James Version. Wherefore, Seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does easily beset us. Let us run, with emphasis on run, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy, emphasis is joy, that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against him, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Let us pray. Well, Father God, we ask that your Holy Spirit come on in. For those who have it inside of them, magnify it, O oh Lord, that he may stand forth. For those who don't know him, Father, make it real so that they can make the right choice. Father, we come today to celebrate a life that you know so well. We ask that you comfort those who need comforting, for you are the God of all comfort. But we ask right now, Lord, that you hide me behind your rugged cross. Hide me, Lord, beneath your wings of glory. Speak to your people, believers and unbelievers. Speak to them all, Lord, that they may hear what thus saith the Lord and make a choice whom this day they will follow. Oh, Father, we thank you for the, the, the opportunity to stand and let you do what only you can do, which is to move in the hearts of your people. We thank you, Lord, and pray this prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 We, 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 we look at these scriptures that we have this morning, and we have a major contrast 
in the opening of the Old Testament verses compared and contrasted with the New. Listen to what the Old Testament says. It said, wait on the Lord. And the New Testament tells us that we need to run the race. Well, you know, you only got to live something and experience something to really know what it means. And I got to tell you the other day, I was with my granddaughter. Her name is Kaylee. And Kaylee wanted to race her opa. <laughs> opa has a torn hamstring from about three weeks ago. I said, okay, we go. We're going to race. She said, now, Opa, when I say three, you run. <laughs> so we got down, and she got down. I didn't. But she got down, and she said, one, two, three. And she started running. And when I tried to run, it started to hurt. And I said, wait. <laughs> so I know what's going on in these verses. While Kaylee was running, Old Paul was waiting. It was a contrast, and it was a real contrast, I got to tell you. But all things and all pun joking aside, we're here to celebrate. So I need you to come on with me. Why, by the way, as we go through this message together, I got to tell you about something that I need your help with. First of all, I need you to pray. Okay, when you pray, Holy Spirit walks up here. Amen? The second thing I need you to do is to talk back to me. You see, because I'm a teacher. And, and when I'm teaching and trying to teach, and I don't hear nothing saying an amen or all right or happy Jesus or something, I think you don't understand, and then I'm going to keep on talking. Okay? So I need your help. Can you do that for me? Can you help me out a little bit? Shake your head. Say amen. Stomp your feet. Do something. Don't leave me up here hanging all by myself. Okay, we all right? Yeah, all right then. The Old Testament verses say wait, while the New Testament verses say run. Isaiah tells us this. He says that they shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and they shall lick up the dust of their feet, and thou shall know, they shall know that I am the Lord. For they shall not be ashamed that wait upon the Lord. Well, you see, waiting is a command that takes us throughout the Bible. And, and if we want to know the resting state of Tyrone, Tyrone's waiting. Yeah, he's waiting on the Lord to come again so that he can get a new body, so he can get new strength, so he can do the spiritual things that a fleshly body can't do. So he's waiting. He's in a state of waiting. But Tyrone is waiting, and we still running. We got to run on. We got a race to run, is what I'm trying to tell you. And this is not new for when Jesus left in his ascension, he told his apostles, go back and wait. Wait for the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, you might forget what I'm talking about when this sermon is over, but his apostles obeyed the sermon that Jesus left them with. In fact, they went back and waited. And while they waited, they were of one accord. And they prayed in unity. And these same apostles that have been fighting all the time that Jesus here, what happened to them? They anticipated the power of the Holy Spirit. They heard, they obeyed, and they waited. Amen? Amen. So, 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 so we know something about what it means to wait. Tyrone's waiting. But we also know something about what it means to run. Yeah, the, 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 the word is a notice that uh, there's a race somewhere. If we running, there's probably a race. Yeah, we're called to run this race. Each and every one of us are called to run the race of life. And that's the title of this message, the race for life but the race for life eternal. Yeah, the Christian walk. Ain't no walk. It's a race. It's a race for life. Whether you're a believer or whether you're an unbeliever, you still got to run this race. Let me tell you, it's already every race has a start line and a finish line. Yeah, the start line, you can call it your birthday because you already running. 
Yeah, that was the day the race begun, your birthday. And if you're a believer, you got two of them. The day that you gave your life to Jesus and was born again, you got another birthday. Well, they, 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 they explain it this way, that the believer and the Christian has two birthdays and one death day. The unbeliever has one birthday and two death days. Because you will die the day that life leaves your body. But death means a separation from God. And, and, and the day you die, the fleshly body, you're going to have to die again because you're going to be separated from God unless you believe in Jesus Christ. So choose you to stay whether you want two birthdays and one death day or whether you want one birthday and two death days. The choice is yours. Amen? Amen. Amen. But, but the, 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 the good thing about this race, the Christian race, is that you don't run aimlessly. You fix your eyes on Jesus and that's the finish line if you believe in Jesus, if you've been saved. If you don't believe in Jesus, then you have but one finish line, and it's called death. That death means that you're going to be separated from God eternally. You got eternal souls, and you, there ain't nothing you can do to take them away. It's determined by what do you believe. That determines where you're going to spend eternity. You will have eternal life, but will you have it with God? Will you have death that separates you from God? Amen? Amen? Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the finish line. He has gone and prepared a place for you that where he is, there you shall be also. Can you think about this for a minute? It took God, it took God six days, six days to create the heavens and the earth and the whole creation. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And he's been gone 2,000 years. Oh, I imagine only what that place going to be like. 2,000 years, what God took six days. Jesus is going to prepare a place more than we could ask or imagine. Oh, that's the hope that we have in Jesus. So now we talked about the running. and We talked about the waiting. Now, if you let me, in the next few minutes, we're going to talk about the race. And I want to show you, if the Holy Spirit allows, the difference in the race that we're going to run between the believer and the unbeliever. Amen? Amen. 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 If you're a believer, you can take comfort. If you're an unbeliever, come on, join us. Amen? Amen? Amen. Every race has a start and a finish line. And every race has some challenges between the start and the finish line. You ever seen a hurdle race? Yeah. You got these little things up about three feet and they all spread the same distance apart. And you run three steps and jump and you run three steps and jump and you can get to the finish line. Uh -huh. Life ain't like that. <laughs> you see, sometimes before you get over one hurdle, there's another one right there to knock you back down. There's another one waiting on you. Sometimes they're the same distance. Sometimes they're different heights. But how you negotiate these, these hurdles determines the abundance of life. Jesus promised, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Jesus has promised to help us with, help us with these hurdles. I'm going to talk about four. And I don't care whether you're 16 years old or whether you're 95, you have seen these hurdles before. That's true. And you have dealt with them one way or the other. You have had to negotiate those hurdles. In a hurdle race, if you try not to negotiate the hurdle, you're disqualified from the race. But you've got to deal with hurdles in the Christian life, too. First hurdle you've got to cross is the hurdle that tells you, It tells you I can't do something because whatever. But you see, that's the hurdle that will stop you from running the race. Or you might be telling yourself, I can't preach. Huh? I can't be a deacon or I can't be a singer. Let me tell you something. The Bible tells me for the believer, 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There's nothing that's too impossible or too hard for God. So we all face these hurdles, the first one being I can't. The anecdote to I can't is believe. The second hurdle that you have to cross while you run in this race is the fear of failure. How many of you stopped doing something or had in your mind you wanted to do something in life, but because you feared you were going to fail, you never even moved? And if you stay there at the fear of failure, you'll get back to the first hurdle, say you can't do it, and then you've got to start race all over again. Oh, I'm just trying to help somebody right now. But listen to what Jesus said to the believer. He says, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. You don't have to fear nothing. You even seen when Jesus came, the angel said, fear not, for behold. Isaiah tells us that God said, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called thee by thy name, and thou art mine. You need fear nothing. The greatest reason you need to fear nothing is because God is with you. Hurdle number three. Handicaps. I ain't talking about physical, though they may be. But I'm talking about societal handicaps, personal handicaps, that tell you you can't do something or have you to fear you can do something because of who you are. Can I tell you this? God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. In female, he created them. That's the reason you ought to praise him this morning. Because you. you're made in his image. You're given love like he has love. You're given power in the name of Jesus. Praise him this morning. But this one is a tough one. Because you have to be careful how you handle these handicaps society has to put on you or tries to put on you. They'll say you can't do something because you're black. You know, black men can't pitch. Black men can't play NFL quarterback. Black men can't be president of these here United States. I ain't going to leave you out. There was a movie that said white men can't jump. <laughs> Any of y'all ever seen that movie? Let me tell you a story. I was a basketball player, and it was the worst mistake I ever made. I was guarding Craig. Craig was about 6'3", 6'4", and I didn't believe white men could jump. And, and I just stayed down in my defensive position like this till Craig went over me and yanked it on me. White men can jump. Amen? But society puts those handicaps on you. They tell you you can't do something because of who you are. Let me remind you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. Who you are is the best thing you've got going for you. God has given you talents, given you gifts, and also given you purpose to use your talents and gifts. Don't let nobody take that from you by telling you you can't do something. I can do all things. I can do all things because I'm made in the image of God. Don't you forget that. The Lord has everything for his purpose, even the wicked for the day of trouble. God ain't make no mistakes in who you are. If you don't remember nothing else about this message, that's the punchline. Who you are is the greatest thing you got going. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the last thing that I have for you before we uh, sit down and get out your way is that you need to know who you are. You need to know not only who you are, you need to know whose. <laughs> you need to know whose you are. For you see, that is the key. The unbeliever thinks he's identified by his possessions, his wealth, his or her wealth and possessions and stature in life and by their appearance quite often. But that's not true for the believer. The believer knows that he's identified with Jesus Christ. He's identified with life. 
And in order to have that, you got to give up ownership. You got to give it up, y'all. You got to give up ownership and allow Christ to be the aim and the focus of who you are, what you do, and what you become. Christ has got to be the finish line. Yes. And when we do that, we begin to operate in the power of the name of Jesus. For you see, in the name of Jesus, we have the power to heal. In the name of Jesus. We have the power to turn water to wine. In the name of Jesus, we have the power to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to make the lame walk and the deaf hear. We have the power in the name of Jesus to make the blind see. There's power in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There's power in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. You and I were dead in our trespasses and sins. But the Bible says that everyone, everyone, who calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. If you don't know Jesus for the saving from your sin, call on the name of Jesus, confess it with your tongue, and believe in your hearts that God raised him from the dead, and he sets at the right hand of the Father, and you will have the power to come in the name of Jesus. There's a way to seem it right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death Tyrone's crossed the finish line Tyrone's waiting we got to keep on running this race we got to keep on running with our eyes fixed on Jesus and I can tell you this that Jesus has gone on to prepare a place for you Siri can't show you the way. That's right. Google Map can't draw you a map on how to get there. MapQuest can't tell you how to get where Jesus has gone to prepare a place for you. And this new app that I don't know nothing about called Waze, it can't help you either. You got to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. He is the way. He's the way to eternal life. He is the truth. He's the truth on how you negotiate the hurdles in this race that we got to run. And he is the life ever after once you cross the finish line. And we all got to cross the finish line. And we all got to wait for his coming unless he comes before we cross that finish line. But I can tell you, there's no other name by which man can be saved. Neither is there salvation in any other. But there is none other name under heaven given among men by which the Lord must be saved. Get started running. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord, y'all. to receive the funeral home.
The Lord is my light and my salvation. As we gather to commit this body to rest, the body of our loved one, Tyrone Esau Boatwright. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for all who shared memories and shared precious moments in your life with Tyrone. And they, they will be hallowed memories. They will be memories that describe a faithful friend a friend who took a butt cutting along with another friend. <laughs> Even though he advised them not to do it, he still took the butt cutting. You will remember Tyrone's radiant smile. You will remember the testimony of Tyrone by the life that he lived. In the name of Jesus, in whom he loved and served, we commit Tyrone's body to rest right now knowing that his spirit is with the Lord, for to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He's crossed the finish line, y'all. He has, and he is resting, and we all rest in our hearts. To be sure, and upon a certain hope, that one day those who believe and trust in Jesus Christ will also rest and be raised from the dead. He will transform us from a fleshly body to a spiritual body. Let us bow our heads and pray. Father, we gather in this solemn place to remember the life of Tyrone and to mourn the death of our loved one. We do not sorrow as those who have no hope, for our hope is in Jesus Christ. We ask that you would comfort each member of the family and every friend. May, you be, may they be comforted by your word, encouraged by the happy memories, and sustained by the hope of the resurrection for all who place their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And now for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace everlasting. Amen.